Okay, so we're looking at the um, greatest common factor mini quiz. And the first learning target is to factor using the GCF. And the second learning target is to solve and find zeros of quadratic equations by factoring using the GCF. Okay, so two similar skills. The first skill we're just going to factor and the or standard and the second standard we're going to solve by factoring with the GCF. So this um, is just factor out the GCF. This is use uh, factor out the GCF in order to solve. Okay, so these are a little bit a uh, little bit more complex. Just a couple more steps. So number one, um, we look at um, x squared and 7x, the greatest factor that they both have in common. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit better, a little bit more, um, is x. So all they have in common is an x, so we'll have y equals x. And remember, factoring out is the same as dividing out. So I had an x squared, I factored out an x, or I divided out an x, which leaves me with an x. Okay, then I have minus 7x. I factored out an x, so that just leaves me with a minus 7. And then you can check that by using the distributive property. Remember, every operation has an inverse. The inverse of addition is subtraction. Inverse of multiplication is division. The inverse of squaring a number is taking the square root of a number. Okay, the inverse of um, distributing is factoring out. All right, number two f of x equals negative 4x squared minus 8x. So we look at this. Actually, let me show you the check step on that one. Uh, we'll just do it for the first one. This is the most basic one as well. So um, we'll take that. Here's our check step. y equals x times the quantity x minus 7. So we'll take that x and distribute it over the quantity x minus 7. So y equals x squared minus and that's so because x times x is x squared, x times negative seven is negative seven x or minus seven x. And that's our original equation, so that checks out, okay? Most of you are probably quite comfortable doing that in your head, which I'm fine with. Um, I would caution you that when you are working with negatives, um, it's probably better not to do it in your head, okay? Even if it's just your own little, you know, chicken scratch handwriting off to the side to do a check with the negatives, it's a little bit more, likely that kids make mistakes, so I would recommend checking that actually with paper, okay? That's very basic. I know you can do that in your head, okay? Number two, um, f of x equals, okay, and then when we have a negative leading coefficient, we want, we prefer to factor out the negative. Okay, what's the GCF of four and eight? Four, what's the GCF of x squared and x? X. So our GCF is negative four x, and negative 4x squared divided by negative 4x is x. Negative 8x divided by negative 4x is positive 2, because remember, a negative divided by negative is a positive. Okay, and when you distribute to check, okay, here's your check step for that. I'll do this one too because it has a negative. Okay, so f of x equals negative 4x times the quantity x plus 2. So I'm going to circle that negative sign with the 4x, okay? And the reason I do that, it's a little extra, a little over the top, but it just reminds you that it's not just that first term that gets multiplied by the negative, it's both terms, okay? So that gives us f of x equals negative 4x times x is negative 4x squared, and a negative 4x times a positive 2 is minus 8x, which matches our original equation, so that's our check step, okay? Um, so again, I know that seems pretty basic and you might feel like you don't need to do the check step, but if you have time, I would recommend it, okay? With the negatives, especially, especially right at the beginning of the unit when you're still just learning how to factor, all right? Number three, as you get stronger, you won't need to do that on pencil and paper, okay? And that I will leave up to your judgment when you feel like you don't need to write out your check step. All right, number three, um, we have uh, P equals, we have 2H squared plus 2H. We're going to leave the P equals. We're just factoring out a um, greatest common factor. They both have a 2 in common, and they both have an H in common. So our GCF is 2H. And then we, when we factor out a 2H squared divided by 2H, that just leaves us with H. And then we have plus 2H. We factored out a 2H, so that's just plus 1. All right? And you can check that with the distributive property too. OK, 
Okay, number four and equals, and then we have um, negative 12w squared and 9w, so the GCF of 12 and 9 is 3, so an L factor of the negative 3, and then they both have a w in common. Okay, so negative 12w squared divided by negative 3w, a negative divided by negative is a positive, so that ter first term will be a positive, and then 12 divided by 3 is 4, w squared divided by w is w, okay? And then we have plus 9w, a positive divided by negative is a negative, 9 divided by 3 is 3, w divided by w is just 1, okay? So it's just minus 3. All right, if you factored out a positive 3w, your, all of these would be the opposite, okay? So if you factored out a positive 3w, that's not wrong, all right, and so instead of having a negative 3w, we're going to have a positive 3w. Instead of having a positive 4w, we're going to have a negative 4w. Instead of having a minus 3, we're going to have a plus 3, okay? All right, someone's at the door. Okay, so the next standard is um, to solve and find zeros of quadratic equations by factoring out the GCF. So very similar to what we did at the top, except um, instead of y equals or f of x equals or p equals or n equals, we would set them equal to zero, get all of our um, x terms and constants on the um, opposite side, get the y or f of x or n or p on its own, change that to zero, and then factor out the GCF like we did at the top, but then set each of those possible answers equal to zero using the um, property of zero and solving. So if we look at number one, okay, we have x squared on both side, sides of the equal sign. We have x's on both sides of the equal sign. So we want to get all of those together on one side, and it does not matter which side. And then you want to factor out your GCF, set it equal to zero, and solve. Okay, so a couple more steps there. So let's subtract 5x squared from each side. And that's going to take this 5x squared. We know that 5x squared minus 5x squared will leave us with 0. And then I see a plus 10x. I'm going to do two steps in one because we just have a little bit of space to work here. So then I'll subtract 10x from each side. OK, bring down my equal sign. 5x squared minus 5x squared is 0. 10x minus 10x is 0. So on the left-hand side, I just have 0 equals. On the right-hand side, 10x squared minus 5x squared is 5x squared. 30x minus 10x is positive 20x. Great. So now I have um, all of my x terms on the same side of the equal sign. And it doesn't matter if you put them on the left or the right. And then I'm going to factor out um, the GCF. So 5 x is our GCF. So we will have 0 equals 5x times the quantity. And then I had 5x squared. I factored out a 5x. That leaves me with x. I had 20x. I factored out a 5x. That leaves me with 4. Okay, so now I have 0 equals 5x times the quantity x plus 4. And then I set each side equal to 0. So 5x equals 0 or x plus 4 equals 0. Divide each side by 5 to get x equals 0, subtract 4 from each side to get x equals negative 4. So when we graph our parabola, which this year because of um, COVID and timing, we skipped that unit because it's easier than the unit we're currently in. But when you graph your parabola, that's where it will cross the x-axis. So if this were your coordinate plane, your parabola is going to cross the x-axis at 0 and at negative 4. Okay, and then, um, so I'm just gonna do it like this. I'm not gonna do too much with the stretch and shrink, but it would actually be a lot more narrow than that, going way down farther than that. But just the gist of it is that the parabola would cross the x-axis at zero and at negative four. Okay, so that's what that means to us. That's the reason we're finding the zeros is because that helps us to graph the parabola. All right, number two. 
So when I get all of our variables together on the same side, I like my leading coefficient to be positive. I want my x squared to be positive. So I'm going to leave this one here, and um, then I'm going to bring everything else over to it. So I'll add 2x to each side. And there's no, so I'm going to line up um, like terms. So see how there's an x on this side, but none on this side. So I'm actually going to put that over here, plus 2x. And then I'll add 7 plus 7. Okay, so on the right hand side, I had negative 2x plus 2x, that's 0. Negative 7 plus 7 is 0. So I have a, a, nothing on my right hand side, which is great. Looking at my left hand side, um, I have my x squared. I'm going to put that first because it's the highest order, so it's the highest power. So we always want that first. Then I'm going to move to my x's, so I have plus 2x. I can only add x's to other x's, I can't add that to a number like seven or negative seven. And then I'm gonna look at my constants. Well, I had a negative seven and then a plus seven. What's negative seven plus seven? Zero. So I don't need to write a plus zero. These two will cancel each other out, a positive seven and a negative seven. So then I wanna factor out. Um, the, um, sorry, this I forgot this x right here, two x. That was a two x, okay? So then I look at it and I wanna factor out a GCF. X is the GCF which leaves me with x plus two, bring down the equal sign zero. Then I branch that off into the two different possibilities, either x equals zero or x plus two equals zero. Subtract two from each side to get x equals negative two. Okay, so x equals zero and x equals negative two. Number three, Find the zeros of the, each quadratic function, show all work, and circle your answer. So f of x is already isolated here for us, which is nice. So we're just going to say 0 equals 6x squared minus 2x. The GCF of um, 6x squared and 2x is 2x. OK, 6x squared divided by 2x is 3x and negative 2x divided by positive 2x is minus 1. So, and you can always check that with your distributive property. So, when we factor that, it's 2x times the quantity 3x minus 1. Okay, so then we're going to say 0 equals, so 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times negative 1 is, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm doing my check step because I just mentioned it. I apologize. Erase that. Well, you already did your quiz, so. Um, then we, what we're doing is setting them each equal to zero. So we get 2x equals zero and 3x minus one equals zero. Divide each side by two to get x equals zero. Add one to each side. That gives us 3x equals one. Divide each side by three to get x equals one third and x equals zero. Sorry, I ran out of room, so I kind of just um, boxed in that part of the answer, okay? X equals zero and X equals one third. Then looking at number four, so we have the Y already isolated, which is helpful, so we just make that zero. We look at seven and 21, they have a GCF of seven, X squared and X have a GCF of X, so seven X. Seven X squared divided by seven X is X. Negative 21 X divided by positive seven X is negative three. Set these each equal to zero. So 7x equals zero and x minus three equals zero and solve. Divide by seven, x equals zero, add three, x equals three. Okay, so x equals zero and x equals three. Okay, so that is the mini quiz. This is two standards and it will be on your unit test um, and it'll be on your quiz. Your quiz will be after the PSAT, okay? So um, Tuesday's assignment, which will be an asynchronous assignment, will be um, to complete the quiz review in your packet. Okay, so that is mini quiz, GCF, and using the GCF to solve quadratics.